April the 27th, 2005, Toulouse, southwestern France. Six test pilots are about to fly a massive aeroplane into the record books. Among the thousands here to witness the event are many who've helped to build the giant new machine. This is what it's all about. Whether you're an aviation or an engineering enthusiast or, or not, this is still a very significant day. Today is the big day for us. Now everything will pay off yeah, in, terms of, in terms of sweat, in terms of time, in terms of uh, problems we had in the past. And now today everything is you know, reset to zero and uh, we look forward to see this baby fly. It's taken over 10 years and £6 billion to get to this moment. The maiden flight of the Airbus A380, the biggest airliner ever built. The world is addicted to air travel, and it's not hard to see why. Decades of fierce competition has resulted in ever more efficient aircraft, and flying has never been cheaper or more accessible. But there is one plane that since it flew back in 1969 has not been superseded, and it's called the Jumbo Jet. The 747 has survived because in all that time, it's never had any direct competition. No one has ever had the nerve or the money needed to take on this aircraft with an all new design. Until now. European plane maker Airbus is staking everything on a machine that they hope will replace the big Boeing and dominate the market for years to come. By any standards, taking on the 747 is a massive gamble. If they succeed, they'll make a fortune. If they fail, billions will have been thrown away. This aircraft cannot be a failure. When you invest $10.7 billion on building what we're pronouncing to be the flagship of the 21st century, you can't fail. There isn't, well, we almost got there, or it's so-so, not too shabby. No, either it's going to be that flagship of the 21st century, or it's going to be a disaster. Since 2003, Channel 4 have had exclusive inside access to this huge project. From the senior management fighting deadlines and budgets... The people are exhausted already. They are under the highest pressure you can imagine to the men and women actually building the plane. These moments really piss me off. It's a tale of the struggle to manufacture giant components all over Europe, and then to ship them to France for final assembly. We are crazy. It's a mammoth high technology engineering challenge. The race to build, test, and fly the brand new machine. In charge of it all is 48-year-old Charles Champion, head of the entire project. He understands only too well the risks involved. Well, what is at stake, I would say, with such a program is basically the future of, uh, of the company, as such. Really? Really. 
Airbus was created in the 1960s, when Spain, Britain, France and Germany decided to take on the might of the American aviation industry. Their first aircraft took off in 1972, and nowadays they make over 300 planes a year. But the A380 is on a different scale altogether. Building such an aircraft, it's a bit like climbing a mountain. Yeah? You see the mountain in the distance, it looks you know, high but not too high. And you start walking and you've got the first, uh, first level and then you say, whew, this one was hard. And you've got the next one, it's even harder. And, and so you, you see the summit, it's getting closer. But at the end of the day, there's still a lot to walk and uh, a lot to climb. The project began 17 years ago. Philippe Jarry was involved from the start. I think it was in 88, where there were the first meetings, very secret meetings, between very few people in Airbus, who said, well, if we had to imagine a very big airplane, let's say 500 or 600 seats, how would it look? At the time, the biggest Airbus was the 380C A340. Could this plane be modified to keep the cost down? The first idea was to use existing components, uh, which has been an Airbus tradition. And so the people started, for example, assembling two A340 fuselages side by side and make it a kind of horizontal fuselage cross-section. Put big wings, of course, and maybe a kind of V-tail, and that was really the first sketch. Called the ultra-high capacity aircraft, this unusual concept was rejected on safety grounds. It would take too long to evacuate in an emergency. The main problem that uh, the people were facing was a very, very large number of seats installed abreast. And it was difficult to accommodate enough doors on each side to ensure for the evacuation. The next idea combined the A340 with a smaller plane, the A320 giving a cross-section similar to the front of a 747, but running full length. But that wouldn't have the capacity required. If you pretend to offer to the uh, airline, the major airline of the world, a top-class, top-efficient airplane, you cannot compromise. As simple as this. So he, it has to be a fully new design. Starting from scratch is the most expensive option, but it's what Airbus decided to do. The plane went through dozens of iterations as designers and engineers worked for over 10 years. The size was driven by the airlines, struggling to increase passenger numbers in the face of increasing air traffic congestion. The airlines told us, don't be shy, don't hesitate. Of course it has to be big. It has to be bigger than anything that is flying. So don't be shy, don't hesitate, make it really big. The resulting design was a plane with 49% more space than a 747, capable of carrying over 850 passengers. Using advanced technology, it would be highly efficient and crucially like the Jumbo, have no competitors. If they could get it right, the A380 could fulfill its ultimate goal to make huge amounts of money. Is this about money? Of course it is. Think about the revenue potential. Each airplane sells in today's dollars at a catalog price of about $300 million. Now over 20 years, our global market forecast is about uh, 1,600 aircraft. Now, assuming we got that entire market, we won't, but assuming we did, with a monopoly position, you'll get pretty close to it, that would be, over the next 20 years, 480 billion US dollars. Suppose you only get half of it, 240 billion US dollars at catalog price. Now that is an awful lot of money. With potentially twice the GDP of Switzerland at stake, the challenge now is to build it.